and uh, welcome to my really cool outfit of the day to show you the garden in June. After our very wet winter and beautiful spring, the hot weather has finally returned to California and the garden is looking pretty raggedy and dry. This is sort of the back of the garden where you have seen in the past a succulent tapestry and more succulents. Here's the, the new additions to our household. They are starting to wander. Uh, they usually don't go in the front yard. I might go get that cat. Okay, we're back. Uh, all the weeds have gone to seed. The path is looking terrible. The aeonium are starting to dry up. Um, the fairy garden, still looking cute. There's a few nasturtiums in the shady part, but this garden needs a lot of weeding, a lot of tidying. Uh, we have a giant rock pile. That was for another project. Uh, it's been in the driveway for like two months. We're now moving it to the front. Um, and yeah, everything's just looking dry, overgrown, needs a lot of work. Um, but this is what the garden looks like in middle of June. So my projects are this Pride of Madeira, this Pride of Madeira, they've flowered out. I've never been a big fan of them and I'm gonna finally maybe pull them out. I've started pulling out some of the nasturtiums as they've gone, um, but everything just needs to be cleaned up, reset. I have a lot of succulents that are finally uh, mature enough to go into the garden, and I'm gonna start placing them around. Like for example, this is a really cool artichoke agave. I did a video on rescuing that. It's finally ready to go on the ground. This is cool. These are some little aloes that a neighbor had left out. They're actually flowering now. This is a part of the garden. I mentioned before I'm resetting and trying to make it look good. The rock purslane has like completely overtaken the path. Just everything needs to be cleaned up because it got very overgrown with all the wet weather and then now it's drying up. So what's interesting, this is uh, an aloe. I have a few of these. This is one of the first things that went into the yard and they're very tall. And apparently, I mean, it looks like this is how these work. They grow up tall and then they fall over and then little new babies come out. So here's one that fell over before. And here's the stump where it was. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting discovery. That's the thing when you get these free plants, you don't necessarily know what you're working with until um, you have them in your yard. As mentioned, this Pride of Madeira, it was a volunteer plant that just has gotten bigger and bigger. This plant, I didn't plant it. It's been here for now, I think this is a year and a half. It's huge, it takes over, um, so I think that's going to go away. Um, I usually keep it in because the bees love the flowers, but they're done and it looks terrible. And uh, I'd like this to be more of a agave garden. As you, speaking of agaves, that's waffles there. Um, this blue agave Americana, which I love, I got from Facebook Marketplace. It's thrown off a bunch of pups. I need to finally get rid of those um, before they get really too big and take over the yard. A lot of plants like those agaves, they can be really invasive if you don't take care of them. So that's one of my projects soon. I do love the color of these, but it has made it impossible to walk through this path. And then they actually dye your clothes. When you walk past them, they like your clothes get a lovely purple stain. The bees love them though. Oh, they really love them. So we won't get rid of them completely. We'll just trim them back. And then moving out to the driveway. I'm kind of doing a reverse version of the tour. Um, I'm not sure if I showed you my beautiful wildflower thing when it was in its peak. I'll have to uh, throw in a clip here. Okay, here's some footage of what it looked like back in May. It was amazing. dry. 
the gophers had a heyday. The um, cornflowers, AKA bachelor's buttons, beautiful, beautiful colors. Um, I recently found out that they are quite invasive. So I bought a, here's a little warning for you. I bought a packet of seeds that said California wildflower mix, assuming that meant California native. I think what they meant is just flowers that do well in California um, because calendula, bachelor's buttons and I think these poppies they are not California natives um, there were California poppies you can see there's some here um, they're done for the most part they're in there this looked amazing the amount of neighbors and friends that really loved the look of this um, it was pretty exciting in the springtime pollinators are loving it it's absolutely covered in bees still and it made for a lot of nice cut bouquets but it's time to clear it out. Same goes for the parkway here where there was also equal amounts of wildflowers that just look like kind of crazy weedy. Time to pull that out. Um, as for the front, again, this was covered in grasses and nasturtiums. I've started pulling the weeds out. Um, we have to take care of this agave, attenuata, foxtail agave. Uh, it threw off its death bloom. It's been like that since November. It's time to cut it off. And then everything else out here is just looking dry. So part of that rock pile I have at the front is going to finally be part of my dry riverbed. I've talked about it for two years now, but it is finally time for me to put it in. And so part of that is just rethinking this whole yard and the positioning of everything. Back at the front here though, um, go for troubles. But on the plus side, this cactus, it had three beautiful blooms in the main part and then another bloom here. So always very special when these things bloom because they only last a very short while. Um, not much change here, but going up, not a whole lot of change here. Not since last time. Still need to clean that up. And yeah, everything is just starting to get overgrown. We've finally cut back the grasses and the sunflowers. That thing I think is about 10 foot tall. I put these sunflowers in to help break up this clay soil. And um, yeah, I think they're pretty happy here. We've got some nice cut flowers from them. And then the raised bed. We've got some tomatoes. We've got some pumpkin. Some stuff's looking a little bit done. My chamomile. But it's been so cloudy. The tomatoes haven't had much um, heat or sun. So finally, it's getting warm. My next project for this yard is this hillside. I have a Matilaha poppy I'm looking forward to putting in there. I have an agave I'm looking forward to putting in there. It just looks terrible right now, but hopefully it'll start looking like my native California hillside, which again is June now. So a lot of the flowers are spent and I'm gonna cut them back. But the red flowering buckwheat, that's a summer bloomer. It's starting to bloom. The Cleveland sage is so happy, the yarrow. Cyanosis uh, is way done blooming. That's an early spring bloomer. And we've got some poppies that are still blooming. There is um, irrigation on here. It just turns on for a couple of minutes of dripping like three times a week. And other projects. My um, succulent wall is fully overgrown and needs to be completely redone. Um, so that's another project as is some of these other raised beds that are <laughs> getting really overgrown. My broccolinis, my lemon trees completely overgrown by sweet peas. I have some more tomatoes up here, which aren't that happy, even though this is like the best spot for them. Um, I don't think the soil's good that great. <clears throat> so not such a happy tomato. My um, green onions that just came from the store, they've gone to bloom and they are seeding themselves here. So that's kind of fun. And we have a fig tree, which has produced in the two years that we've had it, it's got one fig in there. So 
hopefully that means eventually it'll um, start looking better. But yeah, everything is getting dry and is ready to be cut back. I still, of course, have a ton of little propagations to do. And then this is our project that most of that gravel is from. This will become a fire pit and I'm sure I'll do a video about that. We've spent a lot of time clearing out this backyard. Um, it was really overgrown with vines. These trumpet vines were everywhere. So we're just trying to clear it out. But that is what the yard is looking like in June. Still pretty, but uh, getting overgrown. Maybe we'll do it before and after. So here it is before. It's Saturday. Let's, maybe I'll show you what it looks like on Sunday. So it has been about two weeks, maybe more, since I came out here to do my June walk through the garden. It's now July, um, but I did clean it up. So let's see what I did <laughs> in those two weeks. Not a lot for two weeks, but I'll show you. I've talked about it for, oh God, going on two years now. I finally cut down most of the Pride of Madeira that had basically taken over this yard. Now what's crazy about this plant, it started out as a little tiny volunteer. Um, and do you see how big that trunk is? I left up the two flowering stalks um, just because the bees love them so much, but it is going away and um, oh, there's a nice little lizard hanging out. Obviously a very good uh, lizard lookout spot, but that trunk is huge. These plants grow so big so quickly. So um, it was cute for a while, but not really the look I was going for. So it had to go. I also cut back the rock purslane, which had basically overgrown onto the path, um, and still there's tons of it. I left out a lot for free. I still have more just hanging out over there until I figure out what to do with it. Um, but rock purslane is a plant that does really well. It actually does better when you do trim it back. It looks better because it gets to look real raggedy. Um, but so other things in the two weeks that have happened. Um, my torch flower is finally uh, torching. Um, so this and, and this little aloe is blooming. So um, I haven't planted up this, but this is going to be where there's going to be a lot of little deserty agaves. And I don't know. I think I basically have tried to weed a lot of this. Um, this whole path was completely overgrown with weeds. Um, so I'm now finally clearing the weeds, getting things um, back to order. Now that spring is fully over, we're right in the midst of summer. All the weeds are looking bad anyways, really overgrown. So still more weeds to pull out there, but I, you know, but I did take a lot of time to really start pulling them out. And the plan is I'm gonna finally finish, clean up this path um, and I can place the gravel, which I might've mentioned before, all the gravel that was for another project. I'm gonna start laying it down here in this path will eventually become DG. Um, yeah, so all the weeds have started to get pulled out and everything is getting cleared up um, and starting to look a little bit more put together than it did a few weeks ago. And um, yeah, I've just sort of rearranged this little succulent area. It might be a little bit hard to see with the shade and the light. There's an interesting euphorbia that looks really terrible. This was in a different part of the yard and it was really struggling. I think um, I think it wasn't really getting any water to the roots and it was getting lots of direct sun. So I thought, you know, I'll move it here where it's a little bit more protected. You can see it's got a lot of shade from this tree. Um, still a lot more to do here. I really would like to finish all of this off. Move these agaves. They're not happy there. They're too, they get so much shade with, um, there was nasturtium completely covering this whole area, so I've pulled it all out. I'm gonna move those agaves out of there. These are also, um, I think the, that's a pup. I think I had put that one in. There's so many agave pups um, that need to get out of there. I'm gonna move them. These Senecio blue chalk sticks were also in there under the shade, and you can see they look long and raggedy, which is the way they get when they don't have a lot of sunshine. Um, so it makes a little bit more sense to move them over here. 
And uh, let's see, moving along, back down the path. We'll go out this way. Here's the front. I do think I need to get a sign on my agave uh, because it appears that every neighborhood dog has decided this is its toilet and their owners don't seem to do anything about it. So uh, that's a project, make a sign. This is pretty much starting to look like the July garden. Everything gone a bit red from direct sun exposure and the aeoniums going dormant. Um, yeah, I finally cut the, um, <laughs> the foxtail from the foxtail agave. So that was a death bloom. This will eventually dry up and die. So in two weeks, I've just been mostly just trying to maintain the garden, clean it up a little bit, and hopefully um, in the next week or so, I will do a little bit more of a job to really, I've been thinking about this space now, that, that Pride of Madeira, there, that was another, there was a big Pride of Madeira in here. It said I pulled out weeds. I actually pulled out another big Pride of Madeira from this section. So that looks a little bit better. This is gonna become a little bit more of a deserty section. And so I'm really just gonna think about this area, be a little bit more thoughtful about what it's going to look like to make it a little bit more cohesive. In the past, I just kind of like threw every free drought tolerant plant I had in here. And now it's time to like maybe just design it a bit. You can kind of see where there was some aloes that I, they just fall over. I pulled them out. I have a lot of things that I pulled out and just need to rearrange and really think about this garden as a whole and how it will look together other projects to work on. We're starting to clear this out and we're really considering taking out these trees that are not really that healthy and um, are basically overtaking it. I think we want to turn this hillside a little bit more like that hillside to be native California plants, a lot more drought tolerant, a bit more functional hedge. Um, and having native California plants is always helpful. The lantanas here are not looking too happy, but we did um, trim them up a bit. So we need to give them some fertilizer so they'll start flowering. The sunflowers are uh, still crazy big, maybe even bigger. Some of them started falling over sideways and I think it's because uh, some squirrels were knocking them down. Look at this bee. He's just like covered in pollen. He's got so many little pollen boots there see that so this has been a fun experiment with the uh, sunflowers the tomatoes back there here's another hillside that is now going to get a little bit of attention um, as another next project as this becomes the continuation of the native California garden my Matilla hub poppy looks Pretty terrible. I just planted that in there. Hopefully it'll not die. We'll see. So that is it for the June slash July 2023 update. Uh, always millions more projects to do, but as you can see, a little bit of progress done every few weeks. Uh, and that's just the way we gotta do it. Thanks so much for watching. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. You can, of course, follow me on TikTok and Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe.